First off, I just wanted to say that I absolutely love your zeal and your passion for preaching and you trying to preach the best sermons you can possibly do. I think that if any of the preachers across America had half of your zeal and your passion that you bring to the pulpit, I think that we could ultimately change America uh, uh, just through its preaching alone and through nothing else. So I, I just want to thank you for presenting that zeal and that passion to the best of your ability. You do a really good job with showing your emotions and showing your feeling from the pulpit, which I think a lot of preachers lack. With that said, this video is designed to bring some of the things that you said uh, during your particular sermon of how Bible colleges are unbiblical. And basically, I don't agree with you at all on that point. Um, I do love you, but I'm not going to agree with you on that. Uh, I am here for your support, and as iron sharpens iron, so one sharpens another, here I am to sharpen you. With that said, I've got some things here that I want to show you. First of all, I have, uh, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm a, a person who believes in understanding original context and original text. So I'll be using the Greek uh, Bible uh, as much as I can, but I'm going to be using the King James 1611 version that you use uh, just so we can have some common ground. I'm going to use uh, the Greek New Testament, uh, the Hebrew Torah, and uh, as you see, uh, I've got about many pages of notes that I had against your sermon and just things I didn't agree with you on uh, that were absolutely biblical. From time to time I'm going to also be referencing Greek and Hebrew words mainly just because in your uh, uh, comment towards Matthew 23 7 you said that this Hebrew word rabbi means this in English so you gave this Hebrew word and then you translate it into English I'm going to be doing that as well. At 8 minutes and 40 at 8 minutes and 4 seconds, you said that there were three things that churches should do in order that uh, they would be a church, basically. You said uh, to, for them to be a good church. You said, believe in the gospel, what Bible they used, and souls to Jesus Christ. Uh, unfortunately, I, I agree with you on a lot of that, but I don't agree with you on the Bible part. Mainly just because when we flip to Acts 2.42, we see this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and prayers. Uh, I really feel as though if we're trying to get back to that first century church or first century model for a Christian church, which I think is, is what you believe in trying to do, trying to get back to what this says, then we have to devote ourselves to the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, communion, and prayer. But the problem is... You think that the church should have uh, the correct Bible, which unfortunately they didn't have the Bible in this New Testament church of Acts. They had oral tradition. They didn't have the Bible yet. So, so what constitutes being the right Bible? I'm an avid person who does not believe in the 1611 uh, manifesto uh, of uh, the King James Version Bible, I have a number of reasons why I believe that, but I won't go into to those today. Of course, about where are all these preachers? You were talking about that, and within the con you said that all within the context of not seeing any results. You said, well, where are all these preachers? That must mean that you're not seeing results of these Bible colleges. And you said, please remember, you said, what you are doing is not working. Also, in Matthew 23, 7, we're finding the Hebrew word for rabbi. Now, Jesus is telling his disciples, don't call them rabbi. Now, what you were alluding to in your sermon was that you're not going to call anybody by this title of master, and you derive this title master from the Hebrew word rabbi. And this is simply just a misreading of the text, or misunderstanding, mistranslating, misdefining of the Hebrew word rabbi. The Hebrew word rabbi simply means teacher. Your 2 Kings 22.14 reference to college is also an incorrect, incorrect reference as well. The actual reference is to the part of town that this woman lived in and not the college as we think of it today. But Barrett, it says college. Well, in the word, the word college in the year 1611 means a lot different than the word college we have in 2009. The word college in 1611 meant a body of persons having a common pers or purpose or shared duties. Since Holdo was a prophetess who was a keeper of the wardrobe, she lived in the same area as all the wardrobe keepers did. 
and from archaeological discoveries and from uh, historical uh, context as well and other ancient documents, we learned that, that was common practice to live with people who did your same craft or your same art. I mean, that's, that's given. The Hebrew word or college in, in the King James Version Bible is second quarter. That's what it means, is the second quarter in references to the second of four quarters, second to four different halves. And it's just simply referencing to a place in Jerusalem that were divided into four quarters and she lived in the second. It's not in reference to a college. If I take the Bible literally, then we face some problems when we have in Genesis 4 when uh, Lamech chooses two wives for himself. Well, well, where did the wives come from? Did Adam and Eve have daughters and then Lamech took uh, so-and-so and so-and-so, their sister as their wife? Well, God provided them. God provided them. Okay, well, if God did provide it for me, then that's a misreading uh, of the text, and that's a misunderstanding uh, of your literal translation. When we take the Bible literally, we have problems with the genealogy accounts that are matched up in uh, Matthew and Luke. They don't match up if we take the Bible literally. If we take the Bible literally, then we have a problem of bats being mammals. If we take the Bible literally, then we have problems and other views and stuff that we can't explain. It's just that simple. If you take the Bible literally, then the woman who keeps laughing in your sermons or at your sermons uh, when you make jokes and comments, you need to tell her to shut up and be quiet because like, Paul doesn't permit a woman to speak in church. He permits a woman to be silent if you take the Bible literally, and you do. If you hold a literal version or a little reading to the Bible, then you shouldn't be calling people idiots or morons. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 22, that he forbids people to call other people, you fool, raka. You can't say that because you're endangering yourself to the fire of hell. If you hold to a little view of the Bible, then you can't do that. My point in all this is that you misuse and abuse the word of God every time you get up and preach. I've heard a number of your sermons. You need to repent, my friend. You need to repent, brother. You need to start preaching the Bible for what it says and not preach your own uh, doctrine, not preach your own uh, agenda, preach what God's Word says, please. And not from a literal standpoint, because you can't take the Bible literally. There are things called Hebrew poetry that God uses in Genesis to describe a wonderful creation that He made. There's no fileable way that man can understand that. The reason why people learn and go to Bible college, just like what reason why Paul went to school, because Paul did go to school, is the same reason just like ancient Judaism structured their learning around following around a rabbi. Okay? People go to school to learn and to further their minds to become fruitful followers of Jesus Christ. Followers that bear fruit. You quoted earlier, <clears throat> in the context of not seeing results, okay, that what you are doing is not working because you're not seeing results. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any results from you. I'm not seeing any results from your, your church being around 30 is what I can understand. If I'm wrong, please correct me. All the soul winning you're doing of your church, throughout your community, why aren't they going to church there? Because you're obviously not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're doing something wrong. Figure it out. You have a lot of people commenting on your videos, a lot of people leaving text and video comments. Take their criticism because it would be the best and wisest thing you could ever do. I hope and I pray that you get sharper and that you become a better disciple of Jesus Christ because you have great influence as much as that pains me to say you have a number of people who have if you just draw their eyes towards you. And you have a responsibility for those souls. You have a responsibility for the people you preach and teach to and all the people on YouTube who view you. And so you know this. You have my love. You have my spiritual support. I might not agree with you on everything you do, but you have my support as a brother in Christ. And I pray that God blesses you, your family, your ministry, and that you're able to effectively create disciples of Jesus Christ using the Word of God. Preach the Word in and out of season, and I'll talk to you soon.